I'd like to call this <coughs> Caddo Parish Commission regular session meeting to order. Would you please have a roll call, Mr. Clark? Commissioner Hopkins. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Jackson. Here. Commissioner Young. Commissioner Burrell. Here. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Gage Watts. Commissioner Kelly Farrow. Yes, sir. Commissioner Atkins. Here. Commissioner Chavez. Here, sir. Commissioner Lazarus. Here. And Commissioner Epperson. All right, uh, you have seven of 12 members present. That is a quorum. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clark. I will just point out we have seven, so if, if one of us needs to leave, we would no, no longer have a quorum, so let's uh, work our way through this agenda. And unless someone, if someone has to leave, please let us know early so we can try to squeeze everything in. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I, I never asked anyone to do the invocation. Uh, Commissioner Talfair, would you be kind enough to do the invocation? And Commissioner Burrell, would you be kind enough to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please stand. Let us go to the Lord for our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We love you because we do. We are so thankful for the every all the privileges that you have given us as a nation. Lord, we, we so appreciate the freedom that you've given us and the people who defend that freedom. Lord, watch over this uh, present, this us present here as we do the business of the people. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, turn to flag, please. Military and first responders, uh, hand, brow, salute, uh, all other hand over hearts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell, for leading us in the pledge. Thank you, Commissioner Talfaro, for the invocation. Um, Mr. Clerk, do we have any agenda additions? I'm not aware of any, unless you have any. I'm not aware of any. Okay, that brings us to citizens' comments, where citizens who'd like to address the commission uh, are asked to fill out a comment card. Uh, they are located in the chamber foyer and can be returned right over here to my left, uh, or um, you're able to give them to myself or the president. Um, comments are limited to three minutes, and I know that I've at least submitted one uh, card. I do not have any others at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, Mr. Nathan Hicks. Yes, sir. Please come to the podium and let us know what's on your mind. Welcome to the Cato Parish Commission. You have three minutes. Uh, I'm here today uh, on behalf of the industry of video poker. Uh, we usually have a big bullseye on our back. We're not, um, not always the, uh, the good guys in things. But I'm here really in a much different capacity. We own, my family has owned since 1994, a video poker truck stop. It is the bread and butter of our business. We've been in business in Shreveport since the 70s with a car rental business. Everyone that I know that's in this business in this area is a small business family. The relay stations are owned by the Horn family. LSM is owned by the Roth family. And what we're asking for is, earlier this year, as I'm sure you all aware, the state of Louisiana passed a law allowing for a brief open period in which racetracks can put their off-site betting facilities anywhere they want. They have none of the restrictions that video poker has. So they can be within one mile of a church, one mile of a school, one mile of a historic building, one mile of a playground. Anywhere they want to be, essentially they can be. And what we're asking the commission to adopt is an ordinance that would at least make the playing field level. We can't put anything within one mile of any of those types of facilities. And if I'm being honest with you, as a citizen of Shreveport and from a family that's been here back further than I can recount, I don't want that. I don't want a betting facility within a mile of Betty Virginia Park. I don't want a betting facility within a mile of a church. That's not something that even has to be that way. There are plenty of other places that they could go 
and put one of those. And quite frankly, if that playing field is not kept level, with the introduction of these new devices called historical horse racing machines, which it would take me much longer than three minutes to explain, we will be at such a disadvantage that many of the small business operations, say for instance like mine, which is a one stop, I would have to close. Since we've had the smoking ban, which I was totally in favor of, my business has been reduced by 30%. The machines that they'll bring in can do things my machines cannot. They will be able to pay out $10,000 jackpots. We cannot. And the tax money that comes from our machines, eight of the 32.5% returns to this municipality, this parish. You will be able to multiply their tax revenue by thousands and you will still get zero. They will, it will be the single greatest lateral transfer of municipal funds into private hands in the history of the state of Louisiana. The money that will go that, that would be going into the coffers of Caddo Parish will go to the Horsemen's Association. Motion to extend. Second. We have a motion to extend. Uh, is that by acclamation? Yeah. Yes. Uh, two minutes. Two more minutes if you need it, Mr. Hicks. Thanks, sir. And I'll, I'll be brief. I mean, it's, it's quite simple. I'm just asking for a level playing field. We want to be in the same boat with the same restrictions that those folks have because we can't keep losing ground. Harris or the Louisiana Downs has every amenity that I can offer. They can also offer smoking. They can also offer table games. They can also offer horse racing. I simply can't compete. And we know that this market has reached maturity. And that there's a reason that Diamond Jacks wanted to leave. That there's a finite amount of money in that economy. And by not being able to compete, not being able to have the amenities, not being able to do sports betting, those folks will, in essence, I'm not very gifted with words, they'll eat our lunch. It will be almost impossible to continue to operate in the way that we operate. Not to mention, and then also, not only does it 8% go to the commission, 24% of the collected tax from video poker goes to education. And at a time like this, when inflation is increasing, when it's more and more difficult to get, to attract educators, to attract people into this market, I just don't see how we can continue to grow and, and develop as a city if that's taken away as well. And again, that revenue will leave. Not a if, not a maybe, it will leave. Their machines are not taxed at the municipal level. They do not donate to the state in any specific form other than to the Horsemen's Association. And we're not asking them not to be able to do business here. We're just simply asking for a level playing field. And that, that really is, I mean, if I had to be honest, that's what I came to beg for. I, mean, I just need help being able to compete in the industry in which I have been, been in for almost 20 years with a level playing field. I, I can't win if the other person gets four strikes and I only get two. And that, that's really why I'm here today. Um, and and would be happy to answer anyone's questions well, Mr. at all. Mr. Ricks, we can't, we can't do uh, dialogue in this, sec in this section of the agenda. But Mr. Bernstein, would you be kind enough to? Uh, let me point out that we do have a public hearing for this subject. So what we might want to do is during the public hearing of that, if there are some questions from this body, then we need to ask them uh, at that time. Okay, Mr. Hicks, I, I would encourage you to stay for the public hearing where, where, this issue should, where this issue is addressed. I don't know that you knew that this is on the agenda already, that legislation has been proposed. Well, fortunately, I have practice at not being oh. very intelligent, so I give myself a lot of time and a lot of space. Well, so uh, I, I can't, I'd have to look down the agenda to figure out exactly where it is, but uh, the clerk can tell you where it is on the agenda, and, uh, and I'd encourage you to hang out for a while and listen, and listen to that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is item 12.1, by the way. 12.1, Mr. Hicks. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Clerk. Um, and I'm uh, sorry. Um, just want to make sure I said that correctly. Okay, that brings us to visitors, where we have one scheduled visitor today. Uh, our scheduled visitor today is Mr. Gary Joyner. Dr. Joyner, welcome. Hello. President, if I may, I'll enter and uh, 
Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Shadow. Uh, historian Joyner, thanks for coming down uh, to the commission. We talked about this uh, a few days ago. He was going to come down and talk about the uh, Civil Rights Trail uh, and some history. I reached out to Mr. Joyner uh, after our meeting two, meeting, two weeks ago uh, when we had an agenda item about cutting down the tree at the courthouse as well as the public apology. Um, and I told my fellow colleagues, I didn't know the history um, of the tree um, or the apology. And uh, one thing that Commissioner Johnson brought up about Bloody Caddo, I told him I was honest that I didn't, I've never heard of that before either. And um, after dealing with um, some talks with local constituents in my district, they were the same way. They had the same comments. And um, even the, uh, the syndicated radio talk show in the morning, uh, Robert and Michael, they mentioned that they had never heard the term Bloody Caddo. So I actually had somebody that gave me um, a DVD. It was called The Shape of Shreveport, and I'm halfway through. It's very uh, enlightening. Uh, but after, and this was a guest star in the movie that I saw, uh, the DVDs, but I reached out to uh, Mr. Joyner. Somebody told me I should call him as the historian, and, uh, and, he, and he went down a long uh, history trail on um, that, that tree in, in question was not the tree uh, in front of the courthouse. Um, and a lot of other things about history that I think that, that the Cattle Parish citizens should know about. Um, I talked to Mr. Joyner about um, some local guys that did a mural uh, downtown. They put a QR code there. And uh, the QR code, it, it took them to a, a Poetic X, our po Poetic Lariat. Uh, and he did a, and I'll get Mr. Everson to play that for us. It's, it's very awesome. But I talked to Mr. Joyner, I said, could we do something like this where we put a QR code in front of the tree downtown and, and we actually educate the public on the history of, un of unfortunately some of the, the bad stuff of Caddo uh, to enlighten a lot of the people so that we all know our history, we know where it came from, um, and then we can start moving past that. And he said he would love to come down and not only talk to us about that, but he had been in talks with the Lieutenant Governor about uh, furthering the Civil Rights Trail um, and he had identified 32 locations that they had left off the trail and he wanted to come and talk to us about that and ultimately what I'd like to see Dr. Wilson is this commission uh, starts that conversation where we help Mr. Joyner and help that other group that's in town um, to focus on the art and focus on the history and educate the public and, and I think that would be a win-win for, for all of us. So Mr. Joyner thanks for coming down and uh, I'd love to hear uh, the 32 locations, not all of them because we only have 15 minutes, but uh, just your take on all the things that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Sure. Again, thanks for inviting me to, to come down. Um, I teach several courses at LSUS where I'm a full professor and chair of the Department of History and Social Sciences. And one of our big strengths, what we're teaching people to do, is local and regional history so that when the questions like this come out, there are several people who can, who can respond. Um, Bloody Caddo is a term that goes back to the beginnings of Reconstruction, where um, Caddo was uh, not the, the chief lynching uh, parish in the state. We were third. But the people that were here took sort of a, uh, a liking to the idea. Today, everybody, of course, would believe that to be abhorrent. But it was an economic model of all things, where it, it, people thought that if a jury trial would take time and that they would uh, soak up expenses and you have herd mentality and herd mentality dictates that well you know he did it yeah he did it so why don't we just go take care of it not as bad as East Texas was but that's not saying anything there are several lists that show how many people were lynched they all tend to disagree the primary list that academics use is the Tuskegee Institute that shows that in Louisiana we had huge numbers of people who were lynched. Not all black, but by large uh, percentages most were. 
Men were lynched more often than women. Women were lynched. There were people, there were black people that lynched black people. There were, uh, you pick a variety and, and you're going to find an example. Uh, Caddo was, was behind Bossier and Washita. But again, the amount of violence here made it become known as Bloody Caddo. So, uh, you know, come and take my course. And you'll <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, civil Rights Trail. Uh, we've been working on a civil rights trail at LSUS for about two years. And I've created a geographic information system project. We've got 32 sites that are on um, the Excel file and in the GIS. However, there are more to be added. And I don't put anything on there unless it can be verified. So, Here's what we could do. If the commission's interested, I can create uh, the specific locations where events happened. If you want to put up a sign that has a QR code on it, then you just have your Android or your Apple device. You click on it, and you'll have somebody who will tell you, whether it's me or somebody else, uh, what happened and it will put it into context. If you have, uh, say, 36 to 40 things, and I, I think we're going to end up with well over 50, um, it's, they're just dots. And when teachers, particularly in secondary schools, teach this, they don't want to teach it. And when they do teach it, they're separated things. We have to have the lines that connect the dots. We have to tell people who we are. How did we get here? What do we do? And all of that. So uh, I'll volunteer LSUS today. I'm sure the chancellor will be happy that I just did that. But I volunteer us. And, and there's no cost involved. It's just a matter of, of you know, doing public good. Some of the sites are now have large buildings on them, skyscrapers on them, but we need to show where the first downtown sit-in was. We need to show where not only the bad things, but the good things. And there's context. We've been working with a lot of folks on this. We can extend it all the way through the parish. If we set up something with other parishes, we can extend it there. I think the, the Tourism Bureau would probably be happy to uh, add in some publications on it. Uh, it can go up on your website. We can create websites. You can create websites. We'll provide you with whatever information you want. And we need to know where we are. So anyway, that's it. Mr. Joyner, I appreciate you coming down and and, uh, and thank you for that offer from LSUS. Sure. Um, I know, Chairman, this uh, we'll we'll have some discussion about this and and possibly either in long range or an economic development committee. Uh, but I'd love us to research this um, and get with the Tourist Bureau and get with LSUS and and see how we could actually formulate a plan to showcase not only these 32 sites he's identified, but but do it's, some. It's charting. closer to 40 now. I, th I think it would benefit everybody, and it, it would help the conversations that I know some of my colleagues would like to have, and and, and some citizens need to have to, to to fix this and put the past behind us and, and all work together. I think that's what's what's well, needed. Commissioner Chavez, thank you for inviting Dr. Joyner to join us, and thank you, Dr. Joyner, for that perspective and for the offer to uh, work with the commission to put a a historic civil rights history trail together. Commissioner Chavez, may I suggest that you bring this up in Economic Development Committee and explore how to move forward with that? Yes, President. So, Dr. Or Commissioner Chavez will be back back in touch. So, okay. thank you very much, thank Dr. You. Joyner. Good to be oh, back. Sorry, Commissioner uh, Dr. Joyner. Commissioner Burrell had a question, I think. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Glad to see you always. Uh, Mutual. Doc, as you know, I'm always interested in history too, but. Um, my question to you, given that you are a professor and ha have to deal with the educating the public, um, how does this fit into today's uh, controversial CRT, critical race theory, where 
polit uh, where you know issues like this are uh, uh, becoming politicized. They are that we cannot teach our past because of, of, of whatever reason we're trying to basically erase it. And you are in this area. I am, and, and I, I deal with it on a constant basis. Yeah, and and given the fact that critical race theory has not been taught in, in, in the lower grades. They, they've basically been, been no. something that, it, that college professors right. dealt with. But um, now, they've, now they've flipped it all up, upside down. And we have a history, and, uh, and some of us live that history. I, I, know, my, I, you know, I know my history because I dig into it. Uh, but how does this, uh, how would this affect Critical race CRT. theory. Um, critical race theory is basically, it's much more involved than what I'm about to say, but it erases everything that's been taught from a social theory, an economic theory, political theory, and it only covers one thing, that everything happens because of race. And, and certainly, race is a major part of it. You, you can't get away from it. Um, I was reading something uh, the other day by the historian David McCullough, who uh, in, in my 19th century, the, that part of me that teaches 19th century, um, the first question I get, doesn't matter what the race of the student is, is, well, was the Civil War about race? Yes. Was it about slavery? Yes. Anything else? Yeah, states' rights and you know, economics. politics, e economics, everything. You have to put it all together to see it. If we do this trail correctly, there will be information in it so that why did they want to have a sit-in at A and P, where Mr. Pete Harris had his second, third restaurant, now empty. Why, why there? Because it was the largest employer on Milam. Economics is right in the middle of it, as as well as everything else. So, you know, there's so many things that we can do in and making it where you can have a QR code and go pick it. You can have documents that people can see. You can have audio clips. You can have music clips. It, it doesn't matter. All that matters is, is broadband. How much bandwidth have you got? We're pretty good at that. And it ought to be in every part of the city that was here in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and then we expand out from there. So I welcome every point of view. You have to have it. You know, history, history doesn't have an ax to grind. People do. And so you get past that, and, and you teach what's there, and well, that, well, that's the main thing. The reason thing. why I ask it, uh, ask that is, is that because of this, and I never even heard of critical race theory until until it became politicized. Mm -hmm. uh, history is history. Mm -hmm. uh, you have one, I have one. Uh, and, and given the fact that we are using part of our history for economic development, that's going to stymie all of that. So, so to me, it doesn't make sense. But you, can't, but you can't have the cake and eat it, too, you know, the way I see it. Not for long. You know, either, yeah. <laughs> e either you're going to teach history or you're not going to teach yeah. history. I agree. Um, that's, um, but anyway, Mr. Mr. President, I, that came across my mind when he was discussing this, and, and um, I felt that it was necessary to, to mention that. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Just Anyone else for Dr. Joyner? Seeing no one on the board, thank you, Dr. Joyner. All right. we'll, thank you. We'll be thank following you, up. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Clerk. That brings us to adopt regular session minutes. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Jackson, a second by Commissioner Burrell to approve the regular session minutes. Uh, could we have a vote, please, Mr. Clerk? Please vote. Aye. 
And that motion carries with seven in support, none in opposition, and five absent. Uh, that brings us to special resolutions, uh, where you have four special resolutions today. Uh, would you like me to take them one at a time, or? Um, to uh, Spoon, all of them, and Globo. Second. All right. We have a, a motion by Commissioner Jackson to uh, approve, in Globo, and approve each of the four resolutions, special resolutions on the agenda today. Uh, with a second from Commissioner Lazarus. Um, or is there any, well, I guess we can we can vote on that and then decide which ones we want to speak to. Does that work for you guys? All right, let's vote, please, on Commissioner Jackson's motion. Let me just take these one at a time, if I may. Which which one do you have in front of you, Commissioner Burrell? I'm going to ask him to read uh, the 6 uh tournament uh, resolution. Um, Okay. Commissioner Gage Watts is not here, Okay. but I'm the chairman of it. Okay, if you'll stand by for one second. Um, special resolution regarding parks and recreation. Uh, do we have any anyone here to represent? Yeah. Nick Patrick is here. I yeah. do have a copy right. for you, Patrick, if you'd like. Yes, yeah. in this space. Yeah. Did you want to just, do you want to, Patrick, would you like to see us read? No, no need to read it? Okay. Thank you for your service, Patrick. Thanks. All right, so that brings us to yours. Commissioner Burrell, you'd like to see, what would you like to see done here? Uh, we, we can just read it. Um, I, I, it would have been great if, if uh, the commissioner who sponsored it was here. Um, she could present it, probably could present it to me and I can present it to the- uh, Would you like me to present cell. it to you? That'll be fine with me. All right, we'll go. Uh, <laughs> if, you'll, if, if, you'll, if we all stand and you'll read it, uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, I will formally present it to Commissioner Burrell up front. You must keep it in a nice folder. Okay, uh, this is a special resolution of commendation for the sickle cell softball tournament. And it reads, whereas sickle cell anemia is a complex genetic inherited blood disorder characterized by chronic anemia, episodes of debilitating pain, and damage to vital organs that mostly affects people of African ancestry, but also occurs in ethnic groups including Mediterranean and Middle Eastern descent. And whereas the Northwest Louisiana chapter of Sickle Cell Disease Association of America and Shreveport Public Assembly and Recreation will host the 44th annual Sickle Cell Softball Tournament on July 8th to the 10th at Cargill Park in an effort to raise funds and awareness to address and support those afflicted and those affected by sickle cell disease with the goal of eventually breaking the sickle cell cycle. And whereas the Sickle Cell Softball Tournament is the largest softball tournament in the South, known as the granddaddy of them all, it features USA rule, USA rule division C, D, and E contests, senior divisions of over 40 and over 50, a men's home run derby, a women's long ball derby, vendors, a family fun zone, fireworks, and plenty of community fellowship, education, and uplifting of those impacted by sickle cell disease. And whereas this storied event would not be possible about, without the volunteer and professional support of community leaders from Herman Vital to Mayor Adrian Perkins, to our own Commissioner Roy Burrell, and the late Lily Bradford, among others. And whereas Caddo Parish remains dedicated to improving the public health and awareness of conditions like sickle cell disease, and also supports efforts to engage citizens in healthy activities which strengthen our community. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Caddo Parish Commission meeting in legal and regular session the 7th day of July, 2022, that it does hereby proclaim July 10th, 2022 as Sickle Cell Softball Tournament Day in Caddo Parish, Louisiana, and urges all citizens to join with the parish in recognition of this important day. Smile for the camera. Thank you. you. Would you like to say anything, Commissioner Burrell? I'll say a couple of words here. <clears throat> to the commission and administration, we, we, we do appreciate this, uh, this recognition. We've been around 44 years. Uh, I've, been, I've been chairing this for over 25 years. Um, got involved with, with uh, six cell anemia when I was a, a youngster in college. Uh, I believe around 1973, I believe, when I got involved with it, uh, with a young lady who was actually from Shreveport, uh, Maxine Davis. 
Uh, her dad was B.B. Birdbrain Davis, uh, a well-known uh, radio personality in the city. I'm not sure if B.B. is still living. Uh, I know in the last couple of years, I've seen him. He worked for Willis Knight. Uh, I think B.B. is probably hitting on his 90, on, at, you know, right at 90. But his, his daughter uh, was there at, at uh, Northeast Louisiana University, now ULM. And, uh, and she had sickle cell. That's the first time that um, we became aware of it. Our fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated got involved in it. And um, we start, started to bring about awareness uh, there on the campus about sickle cell. And then, and then after I graduated and came to Shreveport in, in 1975, shortly after that I got involved in, here in Shreveport. And, um, and I've been involved in it ever since. Uh, it's a worthwhile cause. Um, um, Mr. Hugh Bradford and Mr. Herman Vitol uh, started um, a softball tournament there at the Lutheran Church where um, uh, Mr. Bradford, Hugh Bradford was a member and they were looking for a place to uh, donate the money that they raised and just so happened sickle cell came about I believe in 1976 here in Shreveport and uh, so they started donating the money there started off with six teams uh, and over the uh, uh, the years it reached over 200 which became the largest softball tournament in the south and we're still going the pandemic hit us uh, knocked it down to about a hundred, but we are rebuilding. So I'm asking the commission uh, to come out and join us. It's a, it's a very family fun uh, event, uh, well secured. So don't worry about that. Bring your kids out. I, in the last two years, I added a family fun zone with water slides because it's so hot out there, uh, and and food and entertainment for the children. So. Um, uh, it, is an, it has an economic impact in the city. When we were up to 200 teams, or over $2 million that weekend, a lot of people made money, restaurants, hotels. So uh, it, it, it has been uh, sort of an a unsung project that uh, we've had in the city. So again, I appreciate uh, the recognition. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Um, let's see, that brings us to item 8-4, is that right, Mr. Clark? Yes, um, and that is, I had spoken with um, Commissioner Johnson who wanted an opportunity to do some final edits on that, so um, we will provide that um, tomorrow, if that's okay. Okay, provide it tomorrow, what do you mean? We don't have it uh, prepared to read today. Okay, well there's Commissioner Johnson right there. But, uh, but so, are we gonna read it, you say, are you gonna just present it to Commissioner Johnson for? For him you'll, to you'll just adopt it. Okay. Uh, you've adopted it, and so we'll we'll provide it, much like we did with the um, Philadelphia Center. Okay. Last time, Commissioner. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Jackson. Weren't you on the board a moment ago? No, I no. wish I was as nice as you were. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. Uh, wanted to ask Commissioner Johnson. Good, good timing, by the way. If I could be added to. Uh, Eight dash four. Yes, I actually <laughs> wanted to make sure that all commissioners were actually on it. Yeah, on that because that's yeah. a that was an elected official, and mm -hmm. I think it should uh, represent everybody. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank and you. then, uh, Dr. Wilson, a, a question on that. Um, I know we have the flags at half mass. Uh, how long is the duration of that, Director? That was until he was put to rest sunset. Okay. Um, I know we still have his flag up there. Thank you for doing that. Yes, sir. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming we'll, we'll take it down now and return it to. Yes, more than likely Chief next week it'll go back up to full staff. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody, uh, Commissioner Burrell. Uh, yeah, Mr. President, I was I was remiss in, in not recognize. Well, I did recognize uh, Commissioner uh, Stormer Gage Watch for, for presenting this, but I also wanted to uh, also recognize the fact that. She has she has a, a child with sickle cell, 
and she knows how traumatic it is on him as well as the family. It's a lot of stress, so I, I definitely want to recognize that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. All right, <coughs> I think uh, that wraps up Section 8. Are we ready to move on to communiques, Mr. Kirk? <coughs> we are. So uh, we are now under communiques and committee reports. Um, you'll notice on the administrative report, we've attached the report from the other day. Um, it uh, did also mention a June financial statement. Um, we've now received and attached that statement. Um, so that's attached on your agenda if you'd like to review it. Okay, thank you. Uh, if anyone have any communiques they'd like to communicate, please get on the board. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, wanted to kind of give my colleagues that kind of don't know about the history of Shreveport from a black perspective where you can actually go get some books. Uh, there's one book called The Black of the Berry, Black History of Shreveport. There's another book called Black Side of Shreveport. And there's another one called The History of Southern University at Shreveport. Those three books were written by uh, Willie Burton. Um, his son is, is also selling those books that you can go read and, and understand the history of Shreveport from a black perspective. Um, I think that, you know, and if you need somebody to come down that's a historian that's uh, black, uh, Dr. Michael Hicks can come down and give us a perspective. Um, I just think that uh, bringing Gary Joyner down to talk about that, you know, is a slap in the face to me. I don't know about my other colleagues, but um, there are other people who can talk about the history of Caddo Parish uh, besides Gary Joyner. And, you know, from a back, black perspective, because based upon, I guess, what I heard, it was based upon me talking about the tree that needed to be coming down. Um, there's always two sides to a story. And, you know, if, if you're talking about something that you want to preserve, you're going to make it soft, gentle, and smooth over. But if it's something that has terrorized people for years, and, you know, you're going to give a different side of that story. It's a side that you hadn't seen because you hadn't had to live that side. Uh, it's just like somebody who basically stays in the middle class neighborhood all their lives. Uh, you throw them into the projects and tell them to start here and make your way out to the front. Someone might gonna make it. Uh, so it's, it's based on the perspective of the people that are impacted the most is the story that you should listen to and not people who were on the other side that it didn't really bother. One thing that I've been, and I've been researching, and there's a lot of information out there. So there's two things that happened on that courthouse grounds. You had hangings and you had lynchings. Two different things. The hangings were legal because the person was convicted of a crime. The lynchings was that a mob, whether that person was convicted or not, and they wasn't convicted, they were basically tried by the public mob and then hung publicly from a tree. Believe it or not, there's documentation of lynchings. Who lynched who and the person that was lynched the time, the date, and all of that. That's a criminal crime. But those people got off scot-free. And today, you want to say, well, that wasn't a tree, this wasn't a tree. But those trees still exist out there. As Commissioner Chavez, or no, Commissioner Young said, those trees live, what, he said 1,500 years, which I don't think they live that long. But if you're talking from 1839, 1840, or 1852, <clears throat> those trees will still be out there. 
and they'll look like they're looking right now, mature. <clears throat> and so whether it's the tree to the left or tree to the right, there was a tree that they did public lynching on. And they probably did it on multiple trees, not just one tree. But I will bring something back in August as a different proposal because I've talked to some other different people to see if I get your support on it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, I, I hate that you weren't here a moment ago. Um, I, I want to showcase something that uh, Mr. Everson has. Um, he's got a picture and then a video that we can showcase. But uh, I, in, in speaking with different people, I spoke with not only Mr. Joyner, but um, uh, Doc, a gentleman. Dr. Joyner. Uh, Dr. Joyner, sorry. A gentleman that was 92, and he, he was also a doctor. Um, and he told me that the, the trees in question had been actually cut down um, and that the, the trees there are different trees. But that's, that's where I, I think we should have these conversations is working together. Uh, the president talked about putting this in, in a economic development committee. And uh, I would love to have that historian, another historian, come down. And we actually put together what truly happened so that people know what, what really happened. And, uh, and just like he said, it's, um, it's history. So um, I know there's a lot of feelings behind it. But I think us working together to do this uh, would be advantageous to all of us uh, and to the parish as a whole. Uh, this was um, a mural for Juneteenth that was put up over there on Edward Street. And uh, I really like what they did. I reached out to Mr. Uh, Drayden Dunn. H him and his outfit did this. And those artists are down painting the murals underneath Marshall Street. I talked to Pam Atchison about this. And she said she would love Shrek to be part of this. She said she would love uh, to partner with LSUS and, and whomever else we bring on board uh, to help do artwork and help do more of these QR codes to tell the story of what truly happened in Cattle Parish. And if you walk up to that picture and you scan your phone, uh, it actually takes you to a poem from our own poem, Poetic Laureate. Um, Mr. Everson, do you have that? And uh, I so don't know gonna, if it'll play, but it's a... Uh, we're going to try to play the video. Right now, you have on the screen the photo that you asked all right. to be shared. So, um, and it was, it was amazingly done uh, how they did this. And I think this would be really cool to help tell the story to everybody about Cattle Parish and about the history. I can't see it from here, but okay. <coughs> It tells a little bit, uh, but what it allows you to do is scan your phone on that QR code, and then, and I'll send this to all you commissioners uh, so that we can see this, um, of the actual YouTube video, uh, and it's Poetic X uh, talking about Juneteenth and the celebration and some of the history, uh, and I would, I would love to do that. I'd love to do that with uh, our long range and our economic development committees and, uh, and showcase the sites around Cattle Parish and showcase what happened and, and in front of our courthouse, what happened there uh, so that people do know? Uh, because right now it's, it's a lot of speculation, it's a lot of different uh, perspectives, but I think if we tell the true story, all of it, regardless <coughs> if it's good or bad, um, that, it, that it would help educate everybody. Um, I know Mr. Everson's having some technical trouble, so we'll, uh, we'll bypass the video. And, Try it. Oh, try it. Other computer, if you like. Well, if that talks about Juneteenth, you know, Juneteenth basically was Texas. Right, it's different, but it's it, but this is um, this is an example of, of what we can do um, for exactly what you would like to accomplish is to tell our story, to tell the story of, of Cattle Parish, and, and I said this when I first started. Uh, it's our it's our story now because we're all here and we're all part of it. Um, but myself and my family we're from a different side of the country, um, so I, I didn't know any of it. So I've, I've done I've been doing research, like I told you I would for the last three weeks. And I've talked to a lot of people. Well, I need you to read these three books I just told you about, and then you can understand. Well, the pro well, all right. So are you done, Mr. Commissioner? It, it looks like the technology is not going to cooperate with us. We'll uh, we'll, yeah. we'll do it in committee. Okay. We'll talk about it. I can sh I can also share it via email to everybody. Okay. Thank you, President. All right, um, Commissioner Jackson. Yeah, I was just going to suggest just just share the uh, link, put it on Dropbox or something, and Google I can Drive. Share it as a link if that'll share work. Share a link, um, and I'll just you know as as it relates to uh, 
courthouse. Um, Dr. Wilson, my understanding was that those trees were also a part of a homeland security threat assessment that was done. And I'll, I'll have to check and verify for you, sir. Okay, it was part of a post 9-11 uh, threat assessment that was done, safety mm -hmm. assessment, mm -hmm. and uh, Homeland Security, um, particularly with uh, aerial aircraft, um, part of that, because I, I think that's also where the, the conversation about the bullets came in at. So it was the bullets to stop somebody from driving up, uh, but also the trees or something about the trees to keep uh, aerial threats. Uh, away, and that was a part of a homeland security yeah. uh, assessment. So, if you could research that and follow up, uh, mm -hmm. and just aesthetically, you know, the uh, trees add a little aesthetic character cool. as well as they cool the courthouse. Correct. I'm sure Correct. you see the electric bill over there every month. Mm -hmm. um, it could be worse <laughs> mm -hmm. without those trees. And so, uh, I don't know how folks live in subdivisions where there is no natural shade. So, uh, but if you could uh, review that information uh, with, uh, mm -hmm. I guess Kevin may have it, or right. am I saying that? Yeah. Is he Kevin or Kelvin? Kevin. Kevin. Um, as well as uh, Captain Jones at the uh, Sheriff's wow. Department. But I could have mm -hmm. sworn I, I remember there being something about a Homeland Security Threat Assessment and those trees okay. being part of it. I'll check Thank it you. out, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Um, Mr. Clerk, or where are we? Are we at President's report? We are. Dr. Wilson, you don't need to tell us about anything? Uh, no, sir. I, I just, maybe one, one thing. I just want to you know, reiterate at the end of my uh, admin report on Tuesday, I did tell you we had a little slight uptick in COVID cases. In the agencies that we work with, we had two reporting, two incidents of infections. And in, in one to date, we have four within our own organization. And that okay. concludes my comments, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Then if we're at President's report, uh, I don't have anything um, particularly prepared, but I would, I would like to comment. Um, Commissioner Johnson um, seemed to have some issues with Dr. Joyner's uh, words earlier, but I just, in my opinion, Dr. Joyner uh, said nothing uh, wrong. Uh, he, he implied that that there were lynchings that occurred, and he implied that the majority of those lynchings were of African Americans, and um, I didn't see any real, you know, uh, any 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 sleight of hand going on with anything he said. Now, the problem with history is that we each see history in, in, our, in our through our own lens, and when we say let's just tell the truth, then I mean you got to tell the whole truth. The you know what is it the the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And there's a big spectrum of truths out there. So it gets really hard to, um, you know, distill it all into one storyline that everybody can agree to uh, or agree with um, because we each have our own view of history. Each individual has their own view of history. So it gets, it gets complicated, and I'm supportive of, of exploring that, that avenue. I just don't want this to become a a uh, path of, that divides us instead of and in, instead of bringing us together to move forward so President, as long as it's not alternative truth you've heard of that statement haven't you uh, I guess I, I guess everybody can make up their own alternative truth yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway but uh, I wouldn't I, I would not have asked Gary Jordan to come here to talk about Mexican history in Shreveport I would not have done it that's what I was saying <laughs> Okay, well, I, I, I don't think Commissioner Chavez meant, had any, any ill will with his intention of inviting. Uh, I understand, but I'm just saying from my perspective, I would not have done it. I would have brought somebody in who has of their, that particular heritage to talk about it from that historical port. We have those people here in Shreveport. Utilize them. Well, that... that that would because be I thing. guarantee you, if you look at what happened at Little Union, and you ask a black what happened at Little Union, and you ask a white what happened at Little Union, you're going to get two different stories. Oh, I agree. Uh, so but, but that's maybe, why I'm but maybe we should have had both. 
Should have. You know, it, but but in reality, it'd be nice if they were all the same story. But but it's not going to be. Yeah. You know that. The complexities we just spoke about. Right. So, uh, but I'm sure you know. Let's not. I hope I hope that we will not hold any any uh, ill will towards any of your fellow commissioners. I have never done that in my <laughs> last 12 years. Okay. All right. Well, we can move on from that topic. Um, Mr. Clerk, where are we here? That brings us to public hearing on zoning ordinances and cases where uh, we have two items in this section today. The first uh, is 11.1. .1. Would you like me to read them separately or uh, read them together and open one here? I would propose that we read them all uh, and then and then have a public hearing unless someone has an issue with that. Okay, and just as a reminder, you know, it has been uh, a little bit of time since we've done uh, these two types of public hearings. We always have the public hearings on your uh, ordinances and we will continue to do that as as normal uh, but it's been a few uh, meetings since we've had something in the uh, public hearing on zoning ordinances and cases so I'll read these two uh, you can you'll do the same process of opening a public hearing uh, and then we'll go from there I'm with you. Uh, the first item is 11.1 .1, public hearing for ordinance 6242 of 2022 in relation to zoning case 21-39-P, that's an ordinance to amend volume two of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Caddo as amended the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code by amending the zoning of property located on the north side of Wells Island Road, approximately 850, uh, I'm sorry, 800 feet northwest of Reverse Drive in Caddo Parish, Louisiana, from R17 Single Family Residential District to, and NA Natural Areas District to OS open space district and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. This is in district three. The next item is 11.2. That's a public hearing for ordinance number 6243 of 2022 in relation to zoning case 22-7-P. That's an ordinance to amend volume two of the code of ordinances of the parish of Caddo as amended the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code by amending the zoning of property located on the north side of Old Mooringsport Road approximately 2,000, uh, two, I'm sorry, approximately 2,350 feet east of North Market Street, Cata Parish, Louisiana, from Tract A being RA, Rural Agricultural Zoning District, to R17, Single Family Residential, and Tract B going from RA, Rural Agricultural District, to R15, Single Family Residential District, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Uh, and this case is in District 2. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clerk. At this point, we will open the floor for public hearing on item, uh, public hearing on ordinance 5242 and ordinance, sorry, ordinance 6242 and ordinance 6243. Is there anyone in the uh, chambers who would like to speak on either of these two ordinances? If so, please come forward. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and move on. Okay, that brings us to public hearings on ordinances, uh, where you just have the one item today, uh, which is a public hearing for ordinance number 6240 of 2022. That's an ordinance to adopt section 12-27 relative to occupational licenses enacting provisions regarding video poker truck stops, peri mutual facilities, and off-track wagering facilities to prohibit within a certain distance from a particular from particular facilities or properties and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. And this right. comes from Commissioner Hopkins and a recommendation from the Long Range Planning Committee. Okay, so I'd like to open the floor for the public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to, for or against item number 6240 regarding video poker and truck stop? And I think you already spoke. I think if, if there were any questions, this would be the time. Okay, come on up, Mr. Hicks. Yes, sir. I, Mr. Hicks, I, I would encourage you to uh, go to the Cato Parish website and pull up the agenda for today's meeting, and you can pull up the legislation that's been um, outlined there. At, at, it's section 12-1, uh, public hearing for ordinance number 6240. Um, but <coughs> Commissioner Hopkins proposed this legislation. Maybe you could like brief Mr. Hicks on what you have here. Well, I think I think Mr. Hicks understands what what it was. I mean, he basically. Uh, Pretty well said the same things I've said that the, the only reason for this legislation was to to make it to put it on a playing field that was even with video poker paramutual and off track betting and that's all this and we're doing it through the occupation license so but if there are any other questions this would be the time 
from the commission and then we'll move, we can move on. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Chavez. Uh, thank you, President. That was one of my uh, concerns was that uh, the gentleman that came down understood the intent of the author. Uh, but then I was going to ask Attorney Bernstein is, um, since, you've, since you've spoken with this gentleman, is there anything else that we can do, we being the parish, uh, to help him and, and not only his family's business, but the, the other two families that he mentioned. Um, obviously, if, if the other entities that are coming in with the historical machines are allocating zero tax dollars, then it behooves us to, to help in the best interest of, of these families and, and their uh, economic impact to our parish. The, the structural differences that uh, he addressed are set by state law. So in that regard, there wouldn't be, um, actually the, the uh, occupational license tax is probably the best way to go about doing it. Um, I'll, I'll yield to you, Attorney Bernstein. I just, I didn't know if, if we had explored every option to, to guarantee no, that we could. There's, there's really um, not, uh, not in getting something done in the time frame that, that, that's out there. Does it seem certainly, like something that we should formulate for next year's um, and, legislative? And, and, and I would also comment occupational license tax is going to be parish-wide. I mean, the other route that you could go, and I'll just throw it out there, is zoning. But there's, zoning, there's such a small part of the parish that's zoned that if you're going to address this issue, occupational license tax is probably the most effective way to do it parish-wide. Sounds like some, we'll, we'll talk about that via committee later on. I, Thank you, President. Thank I, you. I'd just like to make two more points, Mr. President. Uh, this is the only section of Louisiana that the state legislator did this, the state legislature did this in. No other parishes were granted that exemption. And the, every one of those off-track betting sites, the money will go to the ownership of Louisiana Downs. That company is domiciled and incorporated in Mississippi. They won't pay income tax in this state either. Okay, thank you. Uh, before you go, I see Commissioner Jackson on the board. Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. President. I didn't know we, I didn't know we spoke during public hearings, but since we got it open, uh, uh, hearing out if the legislature authorized this, can't they? I mean, regardless of what we do, and I, and I did talk to the author of this because I did get a call or two on this one, um, and nobody was adversarial to it, but I think they want to have some additional conversations, um, and I'm all for trying to get everybody around the table to come to some equitable, because I don't want to put, um, I don't want to do anything that's going to harm businesses that are already here but I know that we have some folks who are up here that are pro-business and they want to see business come to Cattle Parish. And so we got to try to find a happy medium somewhere. Uh, and I think when we've shown where we can sit down, talk through things, not talk at each other, put the frustrations aside, I think we've shown that we can get to some type of agreement. But my question to Henry was, with the legislature authorizing this specifically for this region, can't the legislature come in and say that we have to that the that the um, the uh, what's his name that we will be putting in place? Can't they remove that for the off bed tracking off off OTB? I believe that's what it's called off site track. What is it called? Yeah, the off track, track bed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's OTB. Uh, the way the legislation was drafted, it does not reference Louisiana Downs specifically. Mm -hmm. It talks about times when licenses were transferred and mm -hmm. were acquired, and it just so happens <coughs> that there's they only the, one racetrack right, 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 that right. fits that. Typical. Um, typical of the and from that standpoint, um, the next time that the legislature could address this will be next spring. Right. So. And so hypothetically, they could come in and say. I, Hypothetically, populations it, could, it of, could be a done deal by then. Right. But so, they could say populations of a certain size can't, can't 
can't regulate or can't put any restrictions on OTBs or not practically okay. because okay. we're home rule charter. Home rule charter comes into play. Okay, yeah. so that's the same thing with the right. parish zoning uh, Correct. board. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Chavez, are you back on the board? I, I am, uh, Attorney Bernstein. So, if the only thing that we can do is um, the occupational license, can we then add a eight percent tax on the occupational license Public to the about to the offsite horse racing companies that are coming in to level the playing field? That's, that's the the um, no, because your occupational license rates are set by state statute. And so your problem there is that our ordinance it says that the occupational license tax rates are those set by the state statute. Uh, and it's not, there is not a, a, um, a rate, there's not a rate for doctor's offices. There's not a rate for convenience stores. There's a rate for categories. And so I think the, the difficulty there would be coming up with something different, particularly because the statute addressing the off-track betting parlors has specific language with regard to where the funds go. Uh, and so it... Um, so what category I, I, is I, he? I don't, I, don't, I don't mind looking at it, but I don't think it's going to be a very fruitful endeavor. If, if his category is gambling and, and they fall into the category of gambling at 8%, then it... it it seems like it would work yeah, but not under the occupational license tax that's that that's the difficulty is so I will I will I will I will I will I will continue to research it we'll, we'll take it offline attorney Bernstein thank you thank, thank you president you. thank you Commissioner Chavez Commissioner Johnson thank you Mr. President um uh, I guess one of the questions I want to have what is the distance already established for uh, schools, churches, synagogues, public libraries, presently. If I may, Commissioner Jackson, we can't well, be with Johnson within. Over here, Jackson over there. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize, <laughs> uh, Commissioner Johnson. It, we can't be within one mile of a church, a school, a playground, or any one any building that is on the historical registry of historical sites. That's our current level of restrictions. And that's and that is a restriction that's in state statute. Okay. Already. Then so the, the the issue is that the OTB legislation um, specifically said that it does that the the restrictions in certain paragraphs of the statute do not apply to this particular to OTB parlors opened by this particular license. And one of those paragraphs is the paragraph with the distance restrictions. Okay. To be honest, gentlemen, we know what they want to do. They want to put those racinos in this city, inside the city limits, so they can compete. I mean, right now, a player in this city would have to decide to drive out to Louisiana Downs. They want to remove that geographical restriction in order to literally come into the playing field with video poker and they will have things we can they have progressive machines you can win millions at a racino down south these things are one step removed if you if you added table games they would be physically indistinguishable from a riverboat and we simply cannot compete with those type of amenities especially if they're allowed to come right next door they will take everything that we have because they have everything that we have and a multitude of things that we do not and probably never will have and again that money will leave here that corporation is domiciled in mississippi that's where they'll pay corporate tax i my my corporation is domiciled here both of them i pay personal income tax here they will not Okay, so I guess I'm confused because this basically says a mile away, and if the current law says a mile away, then to my understanding, whatever you have, they can put one right next door to you. Yes, sir. Right yes, now, sir. without with passing this or not passing this. Oh no, sir. Um, we are within one mile of a park now. 
that our location predates that restriction. Air, airport Park is less than one mile from my facility. Less than one mile. Okay. Yes, sir. So they can put one 1.1 1 .1 mile from the park itself. That would up. put you at least in the area of two churches that you would not, again, not set. If that restriction were in place today, you could not build my facility on Monkhouse Drive. It would be impossible. Okay. Um, but I, I just, clarification, point of clarification. I think what Henry just said was they granted an exception to the OTBs. Correct. So the one mile you just talked about doesn't apply to the OTBs. Okay. That, that, that's, well, that's what I, yeah, I'm trying to get to early, but yeah, I'm sorry. That, yeah, the the OTB parlors that are opened by the licensee that it's Louisiana Downs. It, you know, you can look at the dates. You can go and look at the change of license. It's Louisiana Downs. Those OTB parlors that if they're the language in the legislation. Uh, provides that there are certain paragraphs of the statute that do not apply to them um, and that's one of the paragraphs is the distance limitation okay uh, you had just right. confused me there but okay I'm good you're good is that it Commissioner Johnson yes okay thank you Commissioner Jackson back yeah, up no board. that's what and that's what I was trying to get to is that the, it, it sounds like the legislature made an exception specifically for the OT this particular OTB that was set up under the statute and correct that's why I'm going to try to encourage when it comes up some time to postpone to get everybody around the table so that um, it can because what, what I won't what I wouldn't want us to see is us lose the control because the state may not because we're home rule charter they may not be able to uh, tell us we can't but they I think if the state wants to see this done, they'll get some lawyers down there at the legislature to figure out how to get it through. <laughs> and I, I would like to see something that is locally done as opposed to something that's state done with local folks at the table, with everybody winning. Because I don't know that Cattle Parish is in a position to say no to new business either, but I know we're not in a position to run any out and squash anybody who's already here. So that's why I'm trying to go and push for at least some conversations to be had. Now, at a certain point, I think everybody has to choose what side they're going to be on. But uh, my recollection is, wasn't this the bill by the Speaker of the House? No, this is the, the, the this is the bill by Senator Mills. Of okay. Trump, correct. Okay. This is this is Act 92. Gotcha. Correct. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. And and Act 92 basically says, notwithstanding the prohibitions and subsections A and D of this section in paragraph one of the subsection, part of which is the geographic limitations that normally apply to off-track betting. If the owner of the equity in the primary licensee on July 1, 2021 sold the equity of the primary licensee to a new owner and the transaction was approved by the commission prior to November 2021, then the primary licensee shall have until August 1, 2022 to apply for licensing of off-track wagering facility locations. No. So they've got till August the 1st. It, as it relates to the commissioner's discussion of new business, yeah. for Diamond Jacks to even get the ability to move, they had to provide statistical evidence that this market had matured, which they were capable yeah. of doing. So we wouldn't be bringing, the, that market's not going to grow. We would simply be handing right. another piece of the pie to somebody who's not bringing anything else to the table. No. Well, I just hope, I hope, Folks see what I'm saying is that I think a state solution will not take into consideration any of the local concerns. And that's why I'm saying is my hope is to have a local solution where everyone, uh, the person who reached out to me, I encourage them to reach out to Commissioner Hopkins who's leading this effort to have a conversation. So um, we could come to a local solution. I do think the Speaker of the House had a bill that wasn't this, but it kind of broached up on it. Um, it kind of broached up on the situation. And if, if they want to put those bills through, um, we know that they will put those bills through. And we'll just have to deal with whatever comes down at that point. So 
So I, I want you to know that we are sympathetic to your concern. We don't, I don't want you to think that it's falling on death. Oh, no, Commissioner, I did, I did not think yeah. that at all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Is President. Is that it? Yeah, Commissioner Johnson, you back? Yeah, I just want to make sure of something. This only affects outside the municipality of Shreveport. Is that a statement or a question? I'm, I'm, that's a question. And, and that, no, let's ask Blake. Kind of that's my understanding, you. yes. So this doesn't affect Shreveport at all? This wouldn't affect inside the city limits of Shreveport. That's correct. It, it would only be outside the city limits. Okay. In, any city limits. Right. So or, not, correct, any city limits. It'd be right. in the unincorporated areas. Unincorporated areas, areas right. of the parish zone. Right. right. So our vote today will not impact you whatsoever. Okay. You good? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I didn't um, want to make sure he knew that. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, well, Mr. Hicks, uh, we're going to close the public hearing on this. Um, there'll be a, a this comes up again on our agenda to vote on it uh, today. There may be a, a vote to delay, but uh, that clo this closes the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. All right. Okay. Are we ready to move to the next item on your agenda? Yes, sir. That's going to be zoning ordinances for final passage. Where the first item is uh, thirteen point one. Uh, that's Ordinance 6242 of 2022 in relation to Zoning Case 21-39-P. That's an ordinance to amend Volume 2 of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Caddo as amended the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code by amending the zoning of property located on the north side of Wells Island Road, approximately 800 feet northwest of Reverse Drive, Caddo Parish, Louisiana, from R17, Single Family Residential District, to NA, Natural Areas District, to OS, Open Space District, and otherwise provide with respect thereto in District 3. Uh, move to englobo and approve both of those zoning ordinances. Second. We have a motion to englobo and approve Ordinance 6242 and Ordinance 6243. The motion was made by Commissioner Jackson, second by Commissioner Hopkins. Anyone to speak on this? Yeah, I just was going to say that you just note that even though, ironically, the very first case under this new zoning and plan, Mr. Clark came out of uh, one of the areas that had the least amount of land outside of the parish. <laughs> and so uh, I just think it's very ironic when we were listening to some of the comments about urban commissioners don't have a voice or a stake in this. This is in my district. My district is probably 90 plus percent in the city limits, but this one little strip of land ended up being our very first case. So it goes to show that all voices matter. You just never know uh, when. And so uh, I, I do appreciate Ms. McGowan because we've been dealing with this since uh, November of last year and she's been patient. I know wedding season has come and gone, prom season has come and gone, and she wanted to have her stuff up. So she's been very patient. Did we get a chance to refund her, her money? So she's getting this for free. We re or we basically waive the application fee, something like that. Okay. All right. So hopefully that's a, a break even, some kind of consolation prize for the stall. So looking forward to getting this in District Three. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Johnson, do you want to comment on this at all? No. Given that 6243. Is District 2? I'm ready to pass it. Keep going. Okay. All right. Um, seeing nobody else on the board, let's vote. And that motion carries with eight in support, zero in opposition, and four absent. Uh, that brings us to ordinances for final passage. Uh, where we've got 14.1, ordinance number 6240 of 2022. That's an ordinance to adopt section 12-27 relative to occupational licenses, enacting provisions regarding video poker truck stops, paramutual facilities, and off-track wagering facilities to prohibit within a certain distance from particular facilities or properties and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Move to postpone. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Jackson to postpone a second by Commissioner Johnson. Any, anything to add, Mr. Jackson? Yeah, no, I I uh, heard Mr. Nathan, I forgot his last Mr. name, um, and uh, very, very uh, sensitive to the issue that you raised. I, again, as I emphasized during our public hearing, I want to see us come to a local solution uh, on this. I did talk to the author 
of this particular uh, item. And um, hopefully he's in agreement with just a postponement here so that we could talk through whatever the issues are. Um, I do believe Commissioner Johnson identified that uh, if his particular place is inside the city of Shreveport, uh, whether we pass or not, this, whether this ordinance passed, postponed, or doesn't pass, it wouldn't affect his establishment. But I know that there are other establishments out there. So uh, I am mindful of it and just want to give an opportunity for everyone to have a conversation on it. Um, I have no hard thoughts about it, at least at this time. So, uh, but I want to give an opportunity for the folks from Harris or whomever want to uh, ch chime in um, to be able to uh, to participate in the conversation. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Chavez. President, may I yield for the uh, Chairman of Long Range? Sure. So can speak on Commissioner this. Hawkins. Yeah, I would just say that you know I did have a conversation with Commissioner Jackson, and there are some concerns, uh, and I understand from from the other side uh, and they they found out about this late and we're not able to make today's meeting to address it so because of that I'm willing to to go along with the the postponement to that uh, I guess the first meeting in August is that correct since we don't meet again this there's no 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 timetable that we have to be on is there sir did not hear in August some did, wasn't August, August 4th I think so. no wasn't August mentioned as a as a uh, deadline for this the 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 stat the act that was passed gives the racetrack until August the 1st to apply for licensing for an OTV facility okay so if they go forward with it they will have applied for a license before our next Commission meeting okay so that how will that affect this if we postpone um, they may be they may have it in place before you meet before you meet and adopt it it's possible I'm not saying it would but I'm saying it, it would be possible that they would already have applied for their license and come in and applied for an occupational license from us prior to the next meeting okay Okay, I, 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 that's what I needed to know. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Chavez, are you still on the board? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Henry, do we need to pass a temporary moratorium for 90 days? We got a critical issue here, and uh, we got some citizens here that we need to we need to help. Difficulty is you don't have the legislation in front of you to do that. Um, I guess. And if you're asking me for a solution, it would be adopted. And then if you work out a solution, come back and amend the ordinance in August. So would your, would your uh, professional recommendation be to uh, pass this? And then uh, we call it 24 hour long range planning where we set up this moratorium and- uh, well, you, The moratorium's got to come before the commission at a meeting. And so you- we can call an emergency meeting. I mean, we're here to work. We got NACO. I mean, we, we got people going to NACO, so we're not going to have the ability to probably to get a quorum. Yeah. When's NACO? That, that's that's what we're falling into. Twentieth. Twentieth to twentieth. Just just being practical about it. So, I guess the 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 horseshoe is asking for your recommendation on how do we help these citizens. Well, uh, and, and that you know. If, if there's an inclination to do something to help the video poker, the surest way to do that would be to adopt the ordinance at this point. And then if there was some uh, negotiated, you know, uh, negotiations about it, then you could come back and amend it, amend it later, you know, um, because, you know, that, that would be, you know, um, if you're trying to if you're trying to give protection to the local business at this point that would be the best way to do it and then if there is some sort of uh, negotiation that comes out of it out of the discussions uh, with the author of the legislation then the Commission can come back and address that at a later date okay and then uh, attorney Bernstein I'd also like to see if you can if you can draft a memo I'd like to get your opinion on this on if what this gentleman is saying on hundred percent of these revenues are going to Mississippi 
how do we because we're still going to have uh, parish services uh, if people are at this off track betting horse i don't know what they call otbs uh, and they're calling the sheriff we're still paying for all this stuff <coughs> if, if we're netting zero taxes i want you to send us a memo on on if that is true and if that is true then how do we via whatever vehicle uh, we can within our, within our purview um, assess that tax to level the playing field and, and, and one of the one not, of the not here not yeah. here we, we can we'll do this via memo you yeah, tell us you I'm, tell I'll, us how I'll to get, accomplish I'll get, it I'll get you a memo okay uh, president I'll, I'll yield I think they're gonna reverse okay I think Commissioner Jackson you've already spoken on this issue right and yeah this so Commissioner Johnson I, do I think want this is your first time in. yes go ahead so I, I guess I, I keep hearing about Louisiana Downs so regardless of what we do here does not affect Louisiana Downs that's in Bossier Parish last time I looked the off-track betting sites would be in Caddo okay so That's the off sites would be in Caddo. They, they would possibly put some sites in Caddo Parish all right be but, off track but they could still do what they're planning to do without us being involved they can still go ahead and do it whether <coughs> we vote on it today or postpone it it still would be enacted because that's in Bossier Parish, so <laughs> why not? I mean, they could do it. They probably could have the sites in Cattle Parish if we vote today to stop it. But it still could be done 1.1 mile away from where it is. Right. But if we postpone it, they still can do it, and they could be less than a mile. But how many OTBs will get in place in less than a mile between now and then? It's a matter of just the getting the license, it's not a matter of building the building. Well, the license. There's a line waiting, you think, in Baton Rouge to get the license? The, um, they have until August the 1st to apply for the licensing of, that, of the OTV facility. Okay, so NACO is from January the 20th to about the 25th. July. July 20th to 25th. And so, that Monday or that Tuesday, you can easily have a meeting on okay. Wednesday I, I, I before August 1st. I mean, I, I, if this is something that you really need to do and, and really get yeah, real, get I'm your teeth that. into it, right, you know, you can always call a special meeting. So it's nothing to say we can't have another meeting in July. You just have to have it on the back side or either the front side of NACO. <clears throat> um, well, I'll, I'll defer to the, the author on how he wants to move forward. But Commissioner Jackson, you, or sorry, Commissioner Johnson, are you done now? I'm done. Okay, yeah. Commissioner Jackson, you're up. I was just going to amend my motion to uh, request the administrator to not ex to postpone and request the administrator to not accept an application prior to August first. Uh, because this is an administrative process. That's correct, but. Um, there's not a way that he can refuse if they submit the application we have to respond to it I mean we don't have the ability to refuse to grant the occupational license to the occupational license to somebody if they turn the application in but we and issued then, a and moratorium then, and, uh, well, actually you haven't taken yet but you haven't you haven't declared a moratorium and that's another piece of legislation but it would be the same I mean it this is an administrative, to me, I see it as an administrative function. And the, the administrator doesn't have the ability to refuse to grant the occupational license if somebody applies for it. How they don't? Doesn't. There's no basis for it. So any license that comes to Caddo Parish, the parish administrator automatically grants it. If somebody walked in the door with an application for an occupation, no, Henry, that's not what I'm asking. Yeah, that's what you do. That's what you do. That's your practice. No, sir, you that's the law. The law doesn't say you have to give them an, an occupational license. That's not true. It, we don't have a grounds to deny it. You don't have to give it, <laughs> and we'll get sued. <laughs> Henry, I've never seen a situation where a parish. A parish or city or municipality is told that you cannot deny a license. This is this is not a site plan. This is not a zoning matter. This is a license. This is an administrative matter. And, 
I mean, I co- of course it had never been done before, but guess what? I've never seen July 8, 2022 before either. But it's going to come tomorrow. And I'm going to wake up and go on. Yeah, 22, a couple weeks. No, I said July 8, 2022. <laughs> and so just because it hadn't happened before doesn't mean it won't. It, it can't. So all I'm saying is I think I don't want to convolute this anymore. All I'm trying to say is I'm open to doing a special meeting. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. I think haste makes waste, and if we decide to go this route, I think Harris has a bigger microphone because that's who's really pushing this was Harris, Louisiana Downs. Mm-hmm. I think they have a bigger microphone than we do, yeah. and um, they'll just find a way around it. And at that point, similar to some other things that have happened, we won't have no say in the process. And I'd like to have some say rather than none. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commission- but my motion's still on the table, so. So you made, I'm sorry. To postpone. postpone. To postpone. So, uh, okay. uh, do we need to address that motion now, or can no, we? No, I think we've, that's what we've been doing. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Hawkins. I, I would like to make a substitute motion to postpone and set the a special meeting for the 28th of July. Okay, second. We have a motion from Commissioner Hopkins to postpone and set a special meeting till the, at, on the 28th of July. Yes, sir. And a second, I believe, by Commissioner Jackson. Mm-hmm. <coughs> any, any comments on that, Commissioner Hopkins? No, I think this will, this will give us an opportunity to hear the other side, but it will also give us the opportunity to be timely in what we end up doing. Uh, I'm no dummy, but I can look at the room and say, I don't have the votes today. So. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> anything else, Commissioner Hopkins? Anything else? No, sir. All right. Commissioner Chavez, did you want to speak to this matter? Uh, yeah. I, Commissioner, I won't be able to be there on the 28th if, uh, unless it's during the day before the hours of this. But um, the the... We can't pass the moratorium legally because Attorney Bernstein is saying that it's not uh, it's not on here. However, what is on here is Ordinance Number C two forty, and the title does say an, an ordinance to adopt Section twelve dash twenty seven relative to occupational license enacted provisions regarding video poker truck stops, para multi facilities and off track wagering facilities prohibit within a certain distance from particular facilities or properties, and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. Now that's in the title of which we can't change, but we could pass this. And if we pass this, then we could uh, we could amend the body underneath the whereas. And underneath the whereas, where it says whereas video poker truck stops and list, list all those things, we can put, um, we can pick a structure of, of any magnitude that we've already had zoned uh, and CO'd within the parish um, that would encapsulate every single building structure that would that would grant us our moratorium until we came back to the table to fix this. Uh, I don't. I know Attorney Bernstein's uh, uh, forehead is, fr- is is brow, but it's it, but it would achieve what we're trying to achieve since we can't do a moratorium on it. Well, um, anything else, Commissioner? That's it. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion on the we have a motion on the table to delay a vote on this until we can. Um, explore it further and set up a special meeting for July 28th to revisit. All right, let's vote. All right, that motion carries with seven in support, one in opposition, and four absent. All right, so Mr. Clerk, now that's passed, who's gonna, who's gonna set that meeting up and what time and all that kind of stuff? You can handle that, Mr. Clerk? Yeah, I mean, with is there a time that y'all have? Just it, it would be a special called probably. meeting, so, I mean, you can set it whatever time y'all prefer. Do you want me to send out a, a poll or? Work uh, with the, the pre- you can work with the president yeah. on that and y'all can figure out. Let's just say, what, does 3.30 work for everybody? Is that a Monday or Tuesday? It's a Thursday. Let's, let's target 3.30, Mr. Clerk, and, and, and we can adjust if we have to. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and that brings us to uh, the next item on your uh, agenda today is regular session uh, minutes of June 23rd, 2022. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I do? Oh, I'm sorry. I flipped. My page is stuck. I apologize. Um, I did skip over zoning ord ordinances for introduction by title. Uh, we have two today. Introducing ordinance number 6244 of 2022 in relation to 22-1 CTAP, an ordinance to amend volume two of the code of ordinances of the parish of Caddo as amended, the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code, to extend the notification area for mailed notices, to establish the provisions for the neighborhood participation plan, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. The next item is to introduce is 15.2. Uh, Introducing ordinance number 6245 of 2022 in relation to zoning uh, case number 22-11-P, an ordinance to amend volume two of the code of ordinances of the parish of Caddo as amended, the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code by amending the zoning of property located north side of North Lakeshore Drive at the intersection of Fairland Circle, Caddo Parish, Louisiana, from R17 single family residential zoning district to RA Rural Agri Agricultural Zoning District and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. And that item is in uh, District 2. Uh, that then brings us to Section 16, Ordinances for Introduction by Title, where we have one item today. Uh, there was an amendment made to this item, and I did want to point out um, that the ordinance attached uh, does have that amended language included. Um, and it says, uh, let's see, to introduce Ordinance Number 6246 of 2022, an ordinance amending the budget of estimated revenues and expenditures for the River Road Fund for the year 2022 to provide an additional appropriation for Robinson's Rescue and otherwise provide with respect thereto. And that brings us to work session minutes where 17.1 uh, is to consider adopting the work session minutes. Move to adopt. Second. second. We have a motion by Commissioner Johnson and a second by Commissioner Talaferro to adopt the work session minutes. Let's vote please. And that motion carries with seven in support, none in opposition, and five absent. Uh, that brings us, uh, we have no resolutions, old business, or new business scheduled uh, on this agenda today. So that brings us to uh, communiques and committee reports. I will, uh, we will get to communiques. I do want to just point out to my colleagues that we do have one, um, one late visitor uh, in, on our queue for the citizens comment period, which comes up next. But we are on communiques and committee reports. Please, um, if you, if you have something that you'd like to address, please get on the board. Commissioner Jackson, I saw you on the board and you went away. I don't know. The board must have liked me most of the time. Commissioner know. Jackson? Yeah, uh, Dr. Wilson, I got the uh, communication about the uh, medical services at CCC. Um, the, I saw some communication say that we already had it in finance. Yeah, well, this is, this is we have all the attached invoices. Mm -hmm. So I need to give a value to see what kind of process that would be to mm -hmm. go through that Mm -hmm. pile of paperwork and see what, what it is we can get on it for you so would it have been a different format if uh would it have been a different format if um would it have been a different format if um i was getting it from ccc and not our finance well, I mean, well, would it be different than invoices or would it been in an well, excel file or something hmm. That's a good question. I'm like, yeah, um, is this microphone working? I, I don't know if they can hear it, but um, I just sent that uh, compilation of the breakdown based off of the um, summarized data from sh uh, the sheriff's office that came from their accounting department. Every month they send us all the invoices um, and they summarize it by type um, of invoice. So I sent that um, about an hour or two hours ago. Yeah, okay. I, I see CD on that. Okay. Um, but yeah, we do have physical copies of all the invoices. We don't have electronic copies because of the sheer volume and the nature of those invoices. But um, I, I sent you the, the summarize <coughs> and hopefully that'll answer your questions. If yeah. not, you can just reach back out and we'll see what else we can come up okay. with. Yeah. But that's, that's okay. the extent. Cool, well, I, okay. I'll be on the look, I'll research and if I have any questions, I'll give finance a call. Yes, Okay, I'll give finance a call. Um, and then uh, I'm just, if, hypothetically, if uh, white nationalists or black nationalists decide that they were going to have a demonstration at the courthouse tomorrow, yes. would you deny their permit or grant it? I don't have to grant it. I don't have a reason. 
can you speak into the microphone? I would have to follow the, the law and our procedures, and we don't get to vet who, uh, what type of activities take place, as long as they're properly permitted. But I tend to think that that's just a preference and practice of the parish. Yes, but I don't get to decide the morality of things that come to our community. I get to carry out what our policies and procedures are. And so, if the employees wanted to stage a demonstration. If they violated a policy procedure, I would have to deal with that issue. <laughs> which you did, which you approved that permit or denied a permit if they want to stage a demonstration. At em the employee, as long as they're not in a uniform and they're exercising their rights as a citizen, I will have to grant them a permit. I, I just think we need to revisit that because if, if that's our process, is yes, to sir. approve everything. It cannot be arbitrary or capricious uh, that the discretion of someone's like or dislike. Well, I don't think it's at the discretion of your liking or disliking. I just think that it, it, you have a level of discretion and we empower you to do that. And so yes, I don't think it's arbitrary and capricious. Being arbitrary and capricious is not considering the facts. Yes, yeah, so it's the same and thing so, if you ask me if I'm in favor well, no, I think I'll go there since it puts me in that direction. No, I'll just Black I'm, Lives Matter. Because this is all, this is all hypothetical. Matter, I would give them a permit. If it was a white life matter, I would give them a permit. Because it's all hypothetical. This is all hypothetical. Yeah. But I think we need to, because arbitrary and capricious to me is you don't consider the facts, you don't consider any of the details of it. You just, I mean, we are arbitrary, we are arbitrary and capricious up here sometimes. <laughs> We are. We don't have to consider the facts. I hope sometimes. you're not. <laughs> Isn't that right, Henry? No, I hope you're not. We, 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 because we're a legislative body. The facts yeah. on our, up here around this body doesn't necessarily matter to us. It depends on the subject matter. <laughs> yes. okay. but, to, um, but to come back to it, to address to it, what keeps us from denying one person a permit to do something on the courthouse grounds uh, and grant somebody policy. else is the First Amendment. And we have a policy as well. No, where the First Amendment overrides the policy. And if we deny somebody, based on their politics, a permit to, to have an event at the courthouse, we are violating, that is government violating their liberty rights. No, I, I'm, I'm not, That's First Amendment. I'm not, I, I think you're taking it to the, the First Amendment is not what I'm arguing here. What I'm saying is, administratively, I believe that administratively, you're saying we approve everything that comes here. That was a situation. That's, that's correct. That, that was a situation out at the port, where the MPC director, previous MPC director, administratively denied a occupation of a, a permit at the port. Entirely different situation. Uh, but administratively, he denied it because it did not meet the requirements because the permit that they were seeking under the UDC had to have landscaping, and it did not have the landscaping, and therefore, under the ordinance, he had a reason to deny it. And so that's not arbitrary and capricious, right? Correct. And so what I'm saying is the administrator has the discretion to look at the facts and determine whether to approve or not. Entirely different situation, and no, he does not. All right. Well, we'll, we'll. <laughs> We have to agree to disagree okay. on that particular piece of it, but uh, I, I think we need to kind of take a look at take a look at that. And uh, also, I think Todd. Well, never mind. I'll get with Todd on on the uh, meet the long range meeting for next week. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, um, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I caught the tail end of what Commissioner Jackson was asking for from CCC. Is he asking for all of the um, expenses? That the parish pay for medical CCC or just certain ones? medical just medical just medical okay I would like to see what we give um, the sheriff for a, a annual what what's requested what's mandated I want to see what we give for a whole year to the sheriff <clears throat> just just for what for the whole parish or just for the parish yeah from from Cattle Parish Commission Office. What checks that we issue to the sheriff department for a whole year? Okay. Yeah, let's be aware that 
The sheriff 2021. Right. For yeah, 2021. Sheriff, yeah, the sheriff has a tax commissioner Johnson that he used to operate his office. I don't want the taxes. We, I'm we talking about him what's Cattle Parish Commission. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's not as big as you think it is. Well, I just we, want to see what it is. Okay. Well, I'll get you what we have. All right. Mm -hmm. I also would like to see, I think it was a settlement um, based up in when um, Commissioner Stephanie Lynch um, had that <laughs> argument with the sheriff about who, who, who does what at CCC. Oh. I would like to see that, that judgment or... Or what what came down to that who got this responsibility who has that responsibility yes sir i think that that was around 2004. that's what it, it, it happened in 2004. okay and it, and it went to the, to the louisiana supreme court to rule on that okay and of course we go into our archives and get that for you but i would like that archive material okay because i want to make sure that we're dealing with what is responsible for us and he's yeah. dealing with what's yes, responsible sir, yeah, we are. And that we hadn't moved over to the left or to the right any on any of it. So I just want to make sure. Okay. I want to set my eyes on it. Okay. All right. Uh, other thing I want to talk about is, you know, I, I brought the, the legislation about the guns up, and, you know, it's still people are dying almost every day in some parts of the United States. Uh, July 4th was uh, an example of what I talked about of limiting the magazine size. Uh, the person in Highland Park that killed seven people, injured many others, had two 30 round magazines that he unloaded in Highland Park. And he was planning to go to Wisconsin to do some more, but changed his mind. Um, in Virginia, there was two men from a tip that were arrested that had assault rifles and 200 rounds of ammunition. But from a tip from a citizen, the police stopped them, arrested them, and got the guns and got them off the street. Um, here in Shreveport, there was a rolling gun battle on Juella. Um, one person died. I mean, I understand we're waiting on Attorney General's opinion, but we got to do something. People are dying left and right. And for us to sit back and wait and wait and wait, it could be somebody else next. I'm not saying that you can't have these guns, but why would you need more than, I'm going to say again, 20 rounds on a public road? You can have a thousand rounds at the house. I don't care. You're protecting your home. But why would you need more than 20 rounds loaded in a gun driving down the street in Shreveport? There's no reason for that. <clears throat> now, I, somebody told me today, well, I ride around with an AR-15, fully loaded, because I want to protect myself on the street because people are crazy out here. It's not needed. If we put a ban on something like that, that will give the police an opportunity to follow up on surveillance that they're doing on individuals to stop them before something happens, guess what? People, people will abide by the law. If you go into any gun shop, I mean, you go in the gun shop, you go into a, a, a range, that gun has to be unloaded. You're going to ride around with it loaded, get to the range, unload it, go inside, shoot, come back out, unload it, get in the car, load it back up with over 20 rounds. Doesn't make sense. But since that owner of that store says you got to come in here unloaded, you abide by that rule. So why we can't set that same rule up in cattle pairs? <clears throat> Make people go back to six shooters. You know, six shooters are pretty much obsolete right now. They just for show purposes. Ain't nobody going to a gunfight with a six shooter no more. So if you shooting a hundred rounds and they got a, 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 a murder scene and you see all these casings on the ground, 
you understand what I'm talking about. All the little, little cones with the numbers on it, all the number of casings. For a vehicle to be shot almost 400 times, it's ridiculous. So I'm just saying we need to do something. Um, there is no neighborhood in this area that's protected from any time, any type of gun violence. I don't care if you stay in a gated community. Um, I seen probably about two months ago where kids jumped the fence of a gated community, went in there, broke in cars over the night, and then came back out. So there's no, you can't hide behind a fence. There's no bulletproof bubble that's gonna protect the community. So let's put something in place that will protect the people of Caddo Parish. That's all I have, Ms. President. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Seeing no one else on the board, um, we are, what, at Citizens' Comments now, Mr. Park? We are, and uh, during Citizens' Comments, uh, late arrivals. Um, again, there are uh, sign-up sheets out in the foyer uh, that can be turned in here. Uh, I'm only aware of one that I've already shared to the uh, president, um, but if anyone else has one, uh, now would be the time to turn it in. And okay, comments are limited to three minutes. Thank you. Mr. Brian White. Uh, as Mr. White comes up, I will uh, also mention he shared a um, handout that I distributed to the commissioners as well. Okay, thank you. Is that what you just handed that, out? That's about? the sheet that I put on your desk. Welcome, welcome back, Mr. White. Thank you, sir. Um, I do want to note something that was said. People will abide by the law. No, honest people will abide by the law. As is already noted, murder is illegal. Homicide is illegal. Um, automatic fire inside the city limits is illegal. Concealed weapon without a permit is illegal. Drive-by shootings are illegal. Which brings us to the fact that right now we are not doing th certain things on my property because we are honest, law-abiding citizens. Which again brings us to the request to please amend Section 3248. Particularly in front of you right now um, with regards to the law, uh, in di discharge of firearms, Section C is what I would ask to please be removed from this uh, ordinance. And I say that in particular because you will note at the bottom, with regards to law, the state law reference. Uh, illegal use of weapons or dangerous instruments is, uh, is covered by the revised statutes 1494. As you turn to that, uh, on the next page, you'll note that the illegal use of weapons or dangerous instrumentalities is uh, punishable uh, based on interpretation of what those illegal or um, carrying or discharge of weapons are quite heavily at the state level. Uh, I just want to highlight that, that the, the punishment for illegal or uh, dangerous use of weapons is already covered by state law. The, the removal or the penalty for acting irresponsibly is present in state law. The section's ordinance further restricts that beyond simply individual responsibility and puts limits that sh could be defined as not being necessary. Uh, as is noted, uh, honest people will follow the law, um, and they do whenever that is brought to their attention to include myself. Uh, I do want to real quick bring up positive encouragement to your uh, note 6245. Uh, I am of 2022. I am in close proximity to that piece of property. And I do support that. Uh, and I thank you to Mr. Alan Clark previously for some assistance that he granted uh, to myself uh, and others in, in navigating the process through the Metropolitan Planning Commission and the Caddo Planning Commission. Uh, it is my opinion, uh, as my seconds count down here, that unification, not highlighting division, must be the theme in all that you do to, to address the racist problem uh, that you are targeting uh, with many of your events here. Uh, dangerous theories in order to showcase history through can be very dangerous. Uh, as an analyst, we are taught uh, and hounded upon to ensure that what we present is as truthful <clears throat> and as clear of bias as is humanly possible. Uh, any individual that presents, um, presents truth from a perspective other than unbiased opinion uh, is not doing his job. Uh, and culture and upbringing can taint that view. If you took a doctor who was in the, in the hospital all the time, he would, you know, and you asked him for an opinion, it would be that everybody is sick. You have to alleviate yourself from that perspective and gain a, a wider insight. Truth must simply be that, truth. 
Thank you, Mr. White. I think. Um, Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, see y'all. You know.